welcome to Local Kitchen, the show that celebrates the best local food and produce. And also I want to celebrate some of the best chefs in our area. So today I'm joined by Ian Matfin. Hi Ian, how Hello, are you? Rachel. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, lovely to see you too. So tell me, where are you based at the moment? We've currently just moved into a small village called Great Limber. Um, we've just taken over the pub, the new inn. So tell me a bit about your career and where you've been. My career started out at a restaurant in the North East, uh, first Michelin starred restaurant. From there I moved to London, spent a bit of time in some of the hotels in London. From there I ended up in the kitchen by Mr Ramsey. From there we left London and I went to Oxford and I went to work for Raymond Blanc. And then Raymond sent me on my way to Michael Keynes in Devon. So you, you've certainly travelled length and breadth of country. Even you've arrived in the middle. Yeah, yeah, and we we're are. really pleased you have. <laughs> so I know you've been out collecting your local ingredients. So what are you going to cook for us today? So three dishes we're doing. We're starting with a uh, saddle of venison, fondant potato, braised baby gem. We're going to follow that with uh, local asparagus, toasted sourdough, fried duck egg, Lincolnshire poached cheese, of course. And to finish, strawberry salad, vanilla cream, strawberry sorbet and strawberry granola. That sounds absolutely wonderful. So what are you going to start with? We're going to start with the venison. So, Pete, we're here with your deer herd. Yep. Can you tell me a little bit about them, please? I can, yeah. The red deer, as you know, we started with them in 1995. We bought five, we bred them up, bought food calves in over the years, and now we're just shy of 500. How do you rear them? Everything this time of year is on the grass. The only thing we really buy in to supplement the diet is molasses leaks for vitamins and minerals, obviously, to keep them, keep them healthy. So what age would you start slaughtering the animals? Uh, we start slaughtering in about 12 months usually and go through to 24 months. Do you find, obviously, if they're killed in a good environment, in the correct clean way, the meat's a lot more tender? It's a lot more relaxed, it's a lot better, it sets up better, it butchers better. Um, the worst thing with venison is adrenaline because it goes black, it smells, it's awful. You know, and we don't want that. Obviously, that's no good for our product. So they're always killed by the same people that feed them, that look after them, and treat them in a proper manner. So then, Pete, we've got a lovely specimen here. Do you yeah. want to just tell me a bit about it? Well, one quarter, behind quarter of a 24-month-old red deer. When I'm buying the venison, I would use either the saddle or the haunch. Yeah. But for our audience, could you just explain some of the other cuts? Yeah. We'll find the top of the haunch bone and we'll take the haunch off. And there's your full haunch. We'll take your shank off it. And is it still the old way where you'd still follow all the muscle? Basically, yeah. And we just take the shank off. We'll just cut the bone off and that'll finish the shank. There's your shank for a nice slow cook. The kneecap in the end there, and that's your frying steak. And then you're interested in the loin. That's right, yeah. Whereabouts? That'll do lovely. How's that for you? That's beautiful. It's a lovely how it even still has a little bit of the marbling, but the colour of it's stunning. There we go then. We'll pack that up for you. Great, thank you so much. How's that for you? Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. So, then, Nick, can you tell me how long you've been growing asparagus? Uh, I started about 24 years ago. Um, I was looking for diversification. Uh, farming wasn't great at the time. Uh, I've always enjoyed eating asparagus, so I started off with one acre. And at my peak, I got up to 30 acres. Can you explain to me the process of either using seeds or the crown on how to grow the asparagus? When we first started, we, we used to uh, buy the seed, and that would take three years before we could harvest it. We do save ourselves a year by doing it with uh, crowns. And there's a shoot, uh, that'll be the first bit of asparagus. So it's obviously cold today, but if it was a really hot day, 
how quick and how much would the asparagus grow in one day? It, it can grow two inches in a day if you've got a sort of 24, 25 degree uh, temperatures. Days like today, it's about 12 degrees. It, it's slowed right down. Do you pack it on site as well? We do, Ian. Let's go. So, could you just explain to me what's going on behind us? Yeah. It's coming off the field, so he's been putting on the grading machine and uh, it goes, it's sawn to length, about eight inches we sell at, then it's ready to be uh, bunched. Is there different varieties that you have here? Yeah, we've got, we grow two green varieties uh, and this red one. So now it's bunched, where does it go after here? A lot of it goes to the farm shop. We send uh, two pallets a week to London to be distributed to London restaurants. Uh, sort of second grade might go to the wholesale market. Before you go, let me just get you some asparagus. Oh, Lovely. Fantastic. Thank you very much Thank for you. your time. Cheers Thank now. You. Bye bye. So then, Gail, can you tell me how long you've been growing strawberries here? Yeah, my dad started about 35 years ago and I joined him about 18 years ago. And how many acres do you have with all these strawberry plants? We've got 16 acres of fruit, 7 acres of strawberries. But how do the strawberry plants cope with the climate change? Some of the ones that we grow under fleece, they're protected by the fleece so that the um, fruit isn't damaged if it's a heavy rain. It's a microfiber fleece um, and it's, it's like a greenhouse effect. How many different varieties do you grow? Uh, we grow 10 varieties. We have um, three which are early varieties, so they get us started. Then we have the main crop, and then we have some late ones which will see us through into the early August. How long does it take to bring a plant on? We plant new plants in um, the autumn, and then in the June of next year, you would get a few strawberries to each plant, um, which we call the maiden crop. Um, and then you get three main years cropping off them. Once the strawberries have been picked, where would they end up from there? Right, well about 50% of ours is done with Pick Your Own um, and sold in our own farm shop um, and about 50% we wholesale. Would you mind if I tried one? No, please do. Oh, they're beautiful. They're just what I need for my dish. Okay, we've got some of these picked in the farm shop if you would like to take some. That'd be great, okay. lovely, thank you. Great. Lovely, they're wonderful. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Gail. Nice to meet you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. There is a £22 million restoration project going on at the castle at the moment. And when it's finished, no visit will be complete without a delicious afternoon tea in the brand new cafe. Here I've got a lovely afternoon tea prepared by Tea at Six in Ulsby. And I'm going to add to that with some lovely traditional shortbread biscuits. So for my shortbread, I'm going to cream the butter and the sugar together, the caster sugar. I'm actually creaming it till it's sort of light and fluffy and then I'm going to add my flour, and that is literally all you do. Some people add a pinch of salt as well. And we're mixing this all together, and then we're going to chill it slightly and then roll it out. So what I'm doing is actually gathering this to make up a dough. needs to be chilled for about 10 minutes. I'm now going to roll out the shortbread. I'm just going to get a grease tray and I'm just going to put them on there. I'm going to quickly pop these in the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. A 
And these are some I made earlier. And what I did when they came out of the oven, I put them on a cooling rack and I just literally sprinkled some nice casa sugar on. And you can pop them on with the rest of the tea if you want. Quite like the heart-shaped ones, I think they look really rather nice. Or you can just have them on the plate. And of course you need a delicious cup of tea with them. For my shortbread recipe, just go to our website, localkitchen.tv. I'll be back after the break with Ian, and he's going to cook those three delicious dishes. See you soon.